And so obesity is a, it, it is a disease just by definition. It's a very complex neurohormonal disease process with a lot of variable, what we call heritability. So there's a lot of different genes involved. And if we could have perfect lifestyle for for everybody with a perfect environment okay it is the environment that's changed right it's yeah like well a, i was gonna say where was this, was this disease back in 1950 exactly only only the severely genetic um people had it it okay. was there it was there it was just much more rare and there are some very rare severe genetic causes of obesity so you ever hear about like the the kids that are severely obese with yes, the rare outliers absolutely in the pima indians and i and i fully understand that yeah. but, but you realize the, the american the medical association's own group of experts actually advised against considering obesity a disease and they called it an adaptation in 2013 ama sorry who's the, the, the american AMA. medical association yeah yeah, we, their yeah own we know community was like no it's not a disease it's an adaptation but then they did it anyway yeah. Under the pretense well, the, of being able to trust for it, which I'm not opposed to. But the narrative debate, that it's a but, disease is bothersome. It's still, it's still hotly debated. So it's, it's semantic. So, okay, so there's a... Is it? There's a, I don't think so. I want to talk about the the, the false dichotomy. I don't, you probably don't check out my memes, but you should. I've like, checked should, out a lot of the things right, you've but, done. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's... it's nothing. No, but it's... So I, it's, a false <laughs> di- it's, it's a false dichotomy to, to say, like, environment versus drugs. And this is what I always say. It's like, we absolutely sh- should be, and uh, you know, I can't speak for whoever Novo Nordisk and anybody else, but we absolutely should be working on the environment. There, there's the analogy of like, if you have a dirty uh, fish tank, would you t- just give them antibiotics or medicine or would you clean That's the Kelly means, oh, yep, pat oh, him on the show too. Hopefully, we should, we we should do both. give the, the medicine to the diseased fish, but also clean the fish bowl. We, right. it's, it's a false dichotomy to not work on both. And so that's our stance. We are huge proponents of lifestyles medicine and fixing the environment. I don't know what it's going to take to fix the environment. Legislation, there's going to be a lot of pushback. We it's agree harder. that there's a there's issues with big food and a lot of money flowing around here. But as clinicians, we still have to help the, the patient the in front of us. I understand. Completely so, understand. I think we, I think we, I totally understand that. And I agree that so that just, help is needed. Just to go back to the disease, again, this is kind of definition stuff. So the criteria for a disease is, I'm going to go down this, impairment of normal functioning. Okay, so that's it one. It causes that, yes, but it isn't because of that. Now, I, well, I, I, I spoke to a geneticist about this in particular, and the argument is that, yes, obviously, there's a predisposition. I have four markers for obesity. You guys don't. You guys claim to have had, if I can quote directly, abs in utero. I don't. That's, that's the end. I okay, don't. That's totally that's fine. Joke. Uh, joke. I don't. So I, I yeah, have. There's a, genet- there's a genetic. I have. But I, why, I, if I have this this genetic predisposition, then why am I not obese without oh, the drugs? So it's not it doesn't. And it doesn't actually do a good job of predicting. Okay. Uh, who, will, who will develop it? So and lifestyle up regulates does. and down regulates. I get it. But then it's that would be my argument, good. right? That we yeah, should no, live no, a better absolutely. lifestyle. Again, these are not mutually exclusive yeah. concepts. So okay. the heritability, the genetic predisposition, it's like 40 to 70%, but it's so variable. And it doesn't guarantee that you're going to develop obesity. And, and, you know, there's a chance that if I lived, uh, you know, 100,000 years ago, maybe I would have died because I didn't have that uh, evolutionary sense of holding onto my adipose tissue during times of famine or something. I think he's, got, doing doing Neand- bit, I think he's got some Neanderthal genes in him. Yeah, as well. you'll notice. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Come on, Jillian. No. Oh, I, I agree. Well, but anyways, characteristic signs or symptoms and harm or morbidity. Those are the, the characteristics of, of disease. And it, and it really does. It, the impairment of normal functioning, it is because of the neuroendocrine control and the dysfunction that happens because of genes and environmental triggers. So obesity itself is a disease with a variable um, outcome and what harm does I, it I've cause? heard opposites to the contrary, that it results in disease, but in fact, there are people, and if you look up what the experts say from the AMA, they say that another reason why it shouldn't be labeled as a disease, because people who are larger and have more body fat are not necessarily sick at all. That was another that's, reason that's that they said right. it that, wasn't that, a disease. That's fine. But but, that's but fine. we can move. I'll leave this one up to people to decide for themselves because we could be here for a while on that one. 
Can but we? You are, well, hold on. Yeah. But you are right that the the consequences of obesity. So it's variable, right? So pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, atherosclerotic disease, fatty liver, the risk of fibrosis, sleep apnea, so and also mental health. So mental, metabolic, and, and physical health are all downstream consequences of obesity. Whether or not we call it a disease, doesn't matter. R- let other people decide upon it. Okay. It's still driving these. Agree things. with you. I'm there 100%. I'm right. with you 100%. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Can we agree that a calorie deficit... I'm not saying health. I'm not even going to talk about like that a calorie deficit will facilitate weight loss. Can we agree on that yeah, one? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Okay, good. We're there on that one. All right. Can we agree that there are no negative side effects for reasonably restricting calories, not a very low calorie diet, and exercise? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the podcast, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And make sure to let me know what guests you want to see on in the future.